Good afternoon, everybody. Aruba is not only known as uh, a touristic paradise for its white beaches and beautiful uh, waters, but also as a uh, place to register your aircraft. And since this morning also for its coconut drinks. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, why to consider offshore aircraft registration. Secondly, safety oversight and ICAO requirements. And thirdly, why Aruba is a good option to register your aircraft. To begin with, it might uh, sound very common sense. And uh, they say, you know, um, preach to the church, but it's very important when you buy an aircraft to seek professional assistance and guidance. It's something that we see in the office that sometimes is not really done and uh, with all consequences for the transactions. Um, important is to get guidance um, on the legal basis, financial, taxation, and also operational. I think here in this room there are plenty of people that are fit, willing, and able, and eager to provide and qualified to provide that assistance. Once you have that assistance, it's important also before you do a transaction to consider where to register the aircraft. Not all aircraft registries are the best for every transaction, so it's worth considering the alternative jurisdictions called offshore registries. In many big countries, it's a habit. It's, it's common to register aircraft locally, so offshore registries are not really considered. But it's important to realize that where you register aircraft is actually a choice. It's your choice. Aircraft are not only registered offshore to minimize taxes. Offshore registries are more customer focused and service oriented to attract international businesses. And their neutral registration marks provide global travel with confidentiality. Nowadays, more and more operators realize the advantages of offshore registries can offer in terms of operational flexibility and quality and speed of service. Many of the offshore registries are mainly focused on the business aviation markets, so they cater specifically to that market. Uh, I was in Hong Kong in uh, Asia last week, and uh, many operators still tell us that they're not really happy with the local authority, because the local authority focuses very much on their flag carriers. So they don't really uh, give a lot of attention, give a lot of uh, time to the business aviation. And that's uh, an important reason for many of them to consider offshore registration. Most offshore uh, aircraft registries focus, they highlight on the services as a selling power with uh, good reason. They have a customer service oriented, focused culture firmly in place and allow a high level of anonymity, a key selling point for VIPs and VVIPs aircraft. Important to consider when you register your aircraft is the type of financial transaction, the taxation implications, operational implications, what will be the home base of the aircraft, the type of operation also. Um, if you consider where to register aircraft, it's important to look at the legal consequences, the operational part, the taxation part, and also the financial part. Important is, before you do the transaction, to be sure that you have done your research, that you have everything in place, so that um, not to get surprises after the transaction is done. Secondly, I'm just going to elaborate shortly on safety oversight and ICAO requirements because it's very important that uh, the jurisdiction, the aircraft registry you choose, is a reputable and, uh, and, and high standard uh, aircraft registry. Offshore aircraft registries are not registered of convenience, as many may think sometimes. They are well regulated and uh, regularly audited by ICAO and sometimes also by the FAA and the ASA. The main purpose of offshore aircraft registries, like any other civil aviation authority, is to regulate civil aviation, to promulgate a safety culture, and exercise oversight over aircraft under its nationality. ICAO, on, under its USO program, monitors each civil aviation authority, including also the offshore aircraft registries. 
These include online audits, but also on-site physical audits. The Akia audit, audits focus on the state's capability in providing a safety oversight by assessing whether the state have effectively and consistently implemented all Akio annexes. And um, this is as a result of the Chicago Convention of uh, 1944 that ICAO has issued at the, up to this moment 19 annexes. Each of those annexes has to be implemented by each country in its own national aviation legislation system. Uh, important for this conference is the following annexes, Annex 1 that talks about personal licensing, Annex 6, operation of aircraft, Annex 8, awareness of aircraft, and also Annex 19, the uh, safety management. When an audit is performed by a KO, either online or um, a physical audit, a KO focuses on eight areas. These areas are called critical elements. These are as follows. Crit critical element one is the primary aviation legislation. Critical element number two is the specific operation regulations, for example, FAR 91 or FAR 121. Critical element three is the state civil aviation system and the safety oversight functions. Critical element four is the technical personnel qualification and training. That means that each inspector that is employed by the Civil Aviation Authority has to be properly qualified and properly trained. Critical element five is technical guidance, tools, and the provision of safety critical information. Critical element six, licensing, certification, authorization, approval obligations. Critical element seven is surveillance obligation. This is important. Each state needs to have a safety oversight program in place and properly implemented. Critical element number eight is the resolution of safety concerns. So that uh, means that the state needs to have a system on how to deal with findings and how to deal with violations of regulations. Um, when, when an audit is done, when an audit is accomplished, either online or physical, ICAO will um, grade, will score that country. And that is expressed in a percentage, for example, 60, 70, 80 uh, percent. Important is to know that at this moment, worldwide, the average score of every country worldwide is 70 percent. So that means that there's a lot of work still to be done. And ICAO is committed with uh, every country to um, elevate, increase the level of effective implementation of that country to worldwide uh, reach at least 80%. There's no country that has 100%. Um, um, so most countries have uh, between 90 and uh, 50%, but the worldwide average at this moment is 70%. What are the consequences if an aviation authority does not comply or does not have an uh, effective safety um, oversight system? Uh, first of all, the first consequence is it will affect the resale value of the aircraft. A weak authority means a weak operator, means unsafe operation, uh, and it means risks, safety risks. Uh, secondly, um, the lesser or the financing agency might require the aircraft to be registered in, a, in another state, a state with high safety standards. That's, for example, why several aircraft were registered in Aruba, because the lesser were, com were confident with the safety oversight applied by Aruba. So uh, many aircraft were registered in Aruba because of that reason. And thirdly, if safety standards are not met, aircraft registered in that jurisdiction may be banned from flying into airspace. Uh, for example, the EU blacklist is a good example of that. So that means that all aircraft that are registered in your country will be put on a blacklist if you do not comply with the basic safety requirements. Finally, Aruba's compliance with uh, ICAO. Aruba assumes this international responsibility to ensure that all the aircraft on this registry meet or exceed ICAO standards. It has been our mission since they want to ensure that Aruba's DCAs always remains fully compliant uh, with the standards set by ICAO. From 1996 until present day, Aruba has passed all audits and man maintained its FAA category 1 status. 
Finally, why Aruba? Why uh, consider Aruba to register your aircraft? There are many, many reasons, but we'll highlight just some of them. The first one being Aruba is an FAA Category 1 uh, rated state and also EASA accepted uh, jurisdiction. Um, multiple type certificates are accepted, um, including FAA, EASA, Transport Canada, and Brazil. So that means that you do not have to modify the aircraft from one TC to the other just to register your aircraft. Uh, favorable taxation regime, OECD whitelisted, certification and inspection services on demand, speed of service, no bureaucracy, political stability and neutrality. Uh, Aruba, is, by the way, is part of the Dutch Kingdom, uh, so that ensures political stability. Highly regarded jurisdiction reputation, support services 24-7, this is very important. If you as an operator have an AOG on a Friday afternoon or Friday evening, and you need a fair flight, uh, we're gonna help you. So you don't have to wait until Monday morning to uh, continue with your operation. So that is something operationally very important. Also, we have uh, support staff uh, worldwide available. We have inspectors worldwide. Uh, we, important is uh, we have a flexible ownership structure through domiciliation, so you do not have to um, form a special Aruban uh, um, company in order to register the aircraft in Aruba. And the last, we have uh, a lot of agreements with other countries that make the operation into that country very, um, very much easier. Besides aircraft registration, Aruba offers another um, um, amount of services, which include consulting services, um, also, we assist other authorities with uh, regulatory and compliance uh, support. So, and by in doing that, we always uh, uh, um, achieve, we try to achieve um, to improve, firstly, improve safety. We apply risk management principles. We assure compliance. We improve business performance. We improve cost control. And also, the revenues through services. Our services are that delivered by industry experts who are specialists in their fields, who maintain a close strategic working relationship with our clients, aviation authorities, and all agencies involved. So in, in summary, our expertise and our core competencies are, um, of course, aircraft registry, but also aviation legislation, civil aviation regulations, human factors, uh, authority personnel training, aircraft inspection, awareness and maintenance, flight ops, AOC certification, and safety management. Um, finally, just one small um, example of uh, our experience in Kazakhstan. Um, Air Astana is an airline uh, in Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is a country between um, uh, Europe and Asia, a nice country, booming economy based on oil, Aerostana is a flag carrier and has more than 30 aircraft registered in Aruba. In uh, 2009, uh, Kazakhstan was uh, audited by IKEA with negative results. As a result of that, the whole country was put on the European blacklist. What happened then is, um, because of the fact that the aircraft were registered in Aruba, Aerostana got an exemption and was still able to fly to Europe despite the blacklist. So that's a, a huge advantage of the fact that uh, the lesser decided from day one to have their aircraft registered in Aruba. Um, and because of that, they were not really subject to the ban um, um, in, uh, to fly to the EU. So that's uh, just to illustrate uh, one big advantage of uh, going offshore. Finally, just to share with you, um, um, this is a nice picture of our um, flagship uh, aircraft, uh, Boeing 777 um, VVIP. So just to illustrate that uh, we do not only register small um, corporate uh, jet uh, aircraft, but uh, also um, bigger planes like this one. So uh, really, size does not matter. So that was it. Uh, if there are any questions, please feel free to um, ask them. Okay, there's one question on Slido. Um, 
nice easy uh, abbreviations, acronyms. Does Aruba have the ability to approve PMAs, DERs, and STC that are acceptable to FAA and, and EASA? Yes, we do. We basically accept all STCs and EOs and all um, uh, paperwork that is already approved by the FAA or EASA for that particular aircraft. Yes.